Hello, great thinkers. Welcome back to another episode of the Think Great Experience. You are in for more than a treat today. You're in for a true blessing because I have my friend Lisa Varga with us today. And Lisa, among many other things, is an actress, a producer, a director, a writer. She's been a model, a host. Uh, she is CEO of Lisa Varga Entertainment, been on shows like Homeland. You were in the movie uh, Marley and Me. And you've been doing, you've done work on NBC. I mean, you have such an amazing resume. I'm so impressed with you. Thank you so much for being here. It's great to have you. Well, thank you for having me. That's quite an intro. I mean, I hope I can live up to, <laughs> to something so phenomenal. So thank you for that. <laughs> you have been doing great things for a long time. And I was just talking with Gina. You know, we have we have known you. We were, we were discussing this a little bit earlier, probably about 12 years now. Yeah, time flies. It seems it like just yesterday we were in LA and... Um, you know, it was so great to connect with you there. And here we are, you know, and we had, a booth. Later. we had a booth for our book because it was, I believe it was a health and wellness type of event outdoors. Yeah. Because it was LA. So we yeah. were outdoors and we had a booth next to yours. You did. And I totally, it was a friend of mine and they were doing some, one of those like healthy energy drinks with like acai or one of those, some, some kind of super berry in it. <laughs> Very it LA. Veritrol. Yeah. It's something to keep us younger. Yes. And uh, I remember it was outside and that's where we connected and it was a health fair or something like that. Right. Downtown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was there with a book on goals. You were there helping support a friend, but we ended up at a health and wellness uh, event that I feel was destiny for us connecting. I really, yeah. I do. I and do I have been, I've been following you for such a long time. I mean, you've moved all over the country. You have an amazing social media following, but you are doing some amazing things, just sharing greatness in the world today. But we actually connected most on a challenge that we were both kind of experiencing at the same time. I know this has been one of your greatest challenges. What happened with your brother, Shane? Could you share a little bit more about that incident and, and what that did for your life? Yeah, it was life changing. I mean, for everybody involved. Um, in 2009, my brother Shane, uh, he's my younger brother, always like my the baby of the family and just, you know, he, he just he's amazing. He's an amazing human being. So in 2009, he found out he had Hodgkin's lymphoma. Yeah. And at this time, I, I was living in Florida and I was filming a movie and it was my first starring role. And I'm on the movie set and every time I would have a break, you know, I, I, you know, go home and call and tell everybody what was going on. And at this time, Shane already knew that he was diagnosed, but he never told me because he knows that I would have dropped everything and come right home and said, oh my gosh, which is pretty much what I did. So I found out on Facebook that oh my no. brother had cancer. Jeez. So I'm like, you know, scroll, and, and this was back in 2009 before it was really popular. And I remember a, a cousin of mine had said, I'm so sorry to hear about Shane. If there's anything I can do, let me know. And I'm thinking, that's weird. He hasn't said anything. My mom hasn't. So I yeah. remember calling my mom saying, uh, you know, what's going on? I got this weird message. And she said, I think you should call your brother. I will never forget that day. I, everything just froze in me. And I'm like, what's going on? So I call my brother. And he was very quiet because he knew this call was coming because yeah. he knew he was busted. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, what's going on? He goes, yeah, I have cancer. I, I didn't even know what to say. I started crying. It's you have all these emotions and you can testify to that because yeah. actually when you found out, you know, about Gina, yeah. same thing. You just, you, were, you remember us. exactly where you are and exactly what you're thinking. Yeah. You Hopefully know. you didn't find out on Facebook. <laughs> <clears throat> No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. um, I remember I was in a, a, I was working at a media company. We did DVD uh, authoring. And so like you in the film industry, just in different aspects. But I remember sitting at my uh, workstation and I got the call from Gina and I said, how are you doing? And she says, I just was told I have cancer. And it, it seems so surreal. Yeah. And I remember feeling like I was in just a black hole that nothing else existed. It, it, the whole world stopped at that point. Yeah, it does. It really does. And you, you're just, you're there and you don't know what to do. So, you know, we continued and had this conversation and I said, I'm coming home. I, I have to help you. I have to be there. And he goes, Nope, I knew you would say that. That's why I didn't yeah. tell you. And he said, do me a favor. He said, I'm going to be going through treatments for a long time. He did chemo. He did radiation. I mean, he was in it for the long haul. Yeah. 
And he said, finish your movie because I'm going to need something to watch, you know, as I'm recovering. And he goes, do that for me. Mm. And he said, this is your big break. So he was just so selfless and uh, said, you know, you finish strong. It was like that Rocky movie, you know, like the scene where Adrian. He was like, giving oh. you the pep talk. He did. And that's so Shane. You know, it's like it was that real. We joke because when I was living in L.A., I had kind of I had a pretty crazy life out there. Yeah. I would call home and I would call him and he was like a young kid and I was asking him for advice. So he was always, you know, wise above his uh, beyond his years. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, as soon as I was done filming the movie, I literally packed up, left my whole entire career behind to just go home and be with my brother and be with my family. Wow. Little did I know it would change my life too, because, you know, I was in the entertainment business and it yeah. was all about me and, uh, which is hard but, enough to break into, right? Yeah. I mean, it, you had your break here it is and you left it. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because his cancer came back. So, uh, he's doing great today, by the way, just everyone, like I should, Oh, I should have hung awesome. on a little bit longer. I shouldn't have given that <laughs> so much to, I, but I'm so happy. I can't not say that. <laughs> hey, that congratulations um, for Shane, but when did yeah. it come back? So it was about a year later. So in 2009, he goes through chemo radiation. Same. And then we found out he was in remission. I mean, we prayed, we're praising God. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Um, and I said, okay, good. Now I can move back to LA. Cause I had, you know, I have the starring role. And I booked Homeland right after that. So, I mean, it was just, you know, I started to really, you know, get my career going. Yeah. And I'm there and I get another call and he said it came back. And this time he had to have a stem cell transplant. So, you know, again, I just said, that's it. I'm done. I'm done with LA. So I moved back home again. And at this time I had already booked Homeland and it was one of those things again where we were celebrating. It was his birthday. Wow. And I said, I can't do this. He goes, no. He goes, I want you. And it's interesting. When I went for the audition, he insisted that I do it. And it was on his birthday. He goes, no, you have to go. You have to do this for me again. So it was just this weird thing that kept happening between the two of us. And sure enough, I go and I'm filming Homeland. And uh, it's a great experience. And Shane's, you know, just waiting to get ready for his stem cell transplant. You have to wait until, you know, they're all harvested at this point. Sure. They were his own. And I'm on set filming and I get the call. He goes, well, they're ready. And we're going to start in two days. I said, oh my gosh, wow. I have to go. So I went to the producers and this is when Homeland first started. We didn't even know it was an Emmy award winning show. It was season one, episode four. Wow. I do my scene. I go and I tell the producers and they were so wonderful. They said, don't worry about it. You need to be with your family. We'll pay for everything. Go ahead and go. We'll just write around it. <laughs> so fast That's forward. Shane's doing, yeah, it was fantastic. They were amazing. So the joke with Shane and I now is, listen, you better live a long time because that was my big break. So it's, it, it went on to be this great series that I, I had a recurring role in it. And it was, um, it was great. But what's even better is my brother is healthy and alive and happy. And I wouldn't change that for anything in the world. Um, so yeah, it's been, uh, I, I've given up everything twice. It's a, <laughs> yeah, it, and it's a roller coaster of emotions too. Yeah. You know, oh, to see him go through what he went through. And I'm sure you went through the same with Gina. I mean, yeah. Yeah. She was diagnosed. So she had non Hodgkin's lymphoma. Yeah. And, and she was diagnosed in 1999. So, but that one, that did not come back. So she did a year of treatments and she did a stem cell transplant. That's actually what saved her life at the City of Hope. Um, she went on, you know, when she had the stem cell transplant, we had only been married about a year at that point now. And, they made her sign a waiver just saying, you'll probably never have children. So there's all these things. It's not just the cancer and the treatments. It's all the, the little side pieces of info that come at you that really, they, they just strive to rob you of your mindset, you know? Yeah. And she did go into remission. Then she was diagnosed with basal cell cancer a few years later. Um, we obviously, we have a daughter. She, she's going to be 15 this year. In 2010, she was diagnosed with breast cancer from oh radiation. Goodness. Yeah. So the radiation they gave her to fight non-Hodgkin's did not work, but came back to give her secondary breast cancer. Oh, and I know. And he was like, I didn't know huh. that about her. I didn't know that she had breast cancer on top of well, that. Well, so then she had to, because they already radiated her, they had to do, um, previously, they couldn't do it again. They had to do a mastectomy. And in 2011, while she's recovering from the mastectomy, we're at an event to help raise funds to fight cancer at the American Cancer Society, the Relay for Life. And her cousin had noticed a mark on her. 
and said, you should get that checked out. And it ended up being melanoma. Uh. So in 2011, she has melanoma. So she's, uh, we moved to Minnesota at that point. So she can be around family. And then five years later, and I got to, I'll do the same thing because I always make this mistake too. Gina is alive and well, but in, in uh, 2016, my daughter and I did a Starbucks coffee run, right? So we go grab a coffee and come back. And all the treatment she had had over the years, uh, we found out the impact on her heart and she died of cardiac arrest right in front of us. And I started CPR, I sent my daughter downstairs and the first responders got there and took over, but they had said she was gone and they hit her with the defibrillator twice and couldn't get her back. It was the third hit that got her back. And um, she was in a coma for a week. So I sat in ICU with her for a week until she could uh, breathe on her own, speak on her own, get out of bed. Now she has a Medtronic defibrillator in there. Oh and, um, my gosh. I didn't, wow. You know, we haven't caught up in a long time. I know. And what a fighter and what, how, that's the strongest woman I know. That's Wonder Woman right there. Well, you know, she's so, she's so, she's been through so much and recovered from so much. I just don't have a lot to say if I don't feel good. Cause I woke up the other day, I just had a tummy <laughs> ache. <laughs> and I said, oh. I should keep this one to myself. <laughs> you know? should, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sorry for you. There's no excuses anymore. No, there's, there's none. <laughs> but you know, it's it, all of that, I think, really teaches you to rely on your faith it, even more than ever. And, uh, and I know that you are, you are such a woman of faith. Yeah. And, and this new journey that you're on, so kind of conquering the media world again, the third time out of the gates, if you will. Um, your faith, your relationship with God is a big part of it, isn't it? It's a huge part of it. Um, I don't know what I would do without my faith. I mean, ever since I was a little girl, uh, I, I've always had faith and I've always known, you know, I, I was born into a Catholic family. Yeah. Uh, so growing up, I went to Catholic schools, but later, you know, as I got older and I could understand more, um, I became a Christian because it's more about the relationship for me than an organized religion or following sure. rules. It's like, it's, I have a relationship with Jesus. Yeah. And that has gotten me through every single thing in life. I have seen miracles mm -hmm. and I've gotten through everything through prayer, through faith uh, and, and other people in churches and, and family. Um, I just don't know what I would do without my faith. And it's something that will never leave me. And that's, I, I credit everything to that. Um, and it really comes into, it, we really get tested during these moments of chaos or these which, obstacles yeah. like Shane's cancer or Gina's cancer. Yeah, we really, you know, go back to faith. I even say in boot camp when I was in Marine Corps boot camp, I say everybody found Jesus in boot camp because once a <laughs> month, once a week on Sunday you could go to church, right? And yeah. the chaplain didn't yell at you, so everybody found Jesus. But <laughs> I think it's really a matter of not just finding finding that strength in your faith dur faith during the challenge, but also keeping it going after the challenge too. Yeah, it is, and you know, being in the entertainment business it's very hard to find like-minded people that have faith, especially now. Oh my gosh. In the world and the, in the culture that we have, it's um, you know, you can't say anything anymore. And right. I'm finding now that I have made a commitment uh, that anything that I do, it has to have some kind of faith or positivity or something in the middle of it. That's going to bring light to the world. And so that's my thing. It's like, I just, I'm very selective on the projects that I do. Uh, now I create my own projects. So I'll write, I'll produce, I'll direct. And if I see a need for something, I, I'll say, okay, well, that would make a great show or let's put that out there. So I love that. This, yeah. And this is where it's changed. I mean, I, I loved my experience living in LA because it taught me everything I knew. And I see the journey that God took me on. Yeah. I needed to be there and go through everything that I did to learn um, all of the tools that I have right now to produce and create my own content that is uplifting and that, you know, is faith friendly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's exciting right now what's happening. Well, I love what you're doing and I respect what you're doing because I was in the industry. I, after the Marine Corps, I went to USC's film school. So I was in film school. Oh. Then I worked in the industry. So I was in the post-production side. I wasn't in front of the camera. That wasn't my thing, but I was uh, yeah. in the post-production side. And you're absolutely right. There was a lack of people talking about faith. Maybe some had it, but I found that they were afraid to share it, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah, so 
Same. I mean, very, very few people did I meet that I would ever talk. I think I remember one actor being on set and he was praying and talking about Jesus. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Oh. You know, one of me. But other than that, there really weren't that many people who would talk about it. Even if they had faith, they, they wouldn't say it. So, yeah. yeah. Well, now, can you tell us a little bit about his story? Yes. This is an amazing project that you're working on. It really is. So uh, what's interesting, so there is a, uh, it's a worldwide ministry called His Glory. They have 20 million followers worldwide. I mean, it reaches every country. Uh, so they have a huge presence um, and they have all different kinds of programming. So His Glory is, uh, you know, the big network. It's his, So if you ever want to check it out, um, go to yeah. hisglory.me. Uh, for all of the information, they have different programming, all kinds of things. They have prayers, Bible studies. So it's basically, you know, online church, online TV yeah. shows, online programming. Uh, and they also have an app. Actually, the app is more easy to use. <laughs> um, so if you just look up the app, it's His Glory. So I had been asked to be a guest on the show talking about Hollywood and we called it the new Hollywood. So, I, you know, they had heard about me and, and I think they saw something that I had posted on social media. So the pastor, David Scarlett, uh, had reached out to me through social media and said, would you like to be a guest on this show we have called Take Five? I said, absolutely. If I could share my faith and story, it's great. So I did. And then it wasn't until months later, they are growing so fast that they are now going to become a 24 hour, you know, 24 seven network where it's just wow. constant programming. So they're in the works right now of partnering with so many great people. Uh, so this is going to be very exciting. I, I'm getting in right now where it's just, it's building and growing. But I remember uh, about two months ago, the pastor who I'd done the interview with said, I have been praying and the Holy Spirit uh, said, you have your host because he, he was looking for some kind of sports show. And I had did something, uh, it was called Beyond the Off Season. And it was taking, yeah. you know, athletes and coaches and sports teams and finding out what they're doing their off season to do good to the world and give back to the community. So I had this whole entire like platform seasons planned out. And so when he reached out to me and said, I'm looking for someone to, you know, co-host with me doing some kind of sports show. Do you have yeah. anything? I said, I sure do. And that was a God thing too, because of Shane. So when Shane sure. was sick, I tried everything to boost his spirits and he loved the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I reached out to some of my friends and I was like, what can we do for the Pittsburgh Steelers? So we had players from the team call him, send him, you know, all kinds of shirts and jerseys and autographs. Uh -huh. And I said, wow, look at these players doing really good things. Yeah. And uh, so that's what started that whole beyond the off season, which fast forward, you know, was my practice field for what I'm doing right now. But what's interesting is when we got on the call, uh, we started brainstorming a little bit and I said, well, why don't we have athletes, entertainers, uh, people in the entertainment business, musicians. And so it kind of grew into this more of an entertainment sports, you know, kind of a thing. Yeah. So his story is all about his story. It's about these athletes, actors, entertainers, musicians talking about their journey, the ups, the downs, the good, the bad, but what's the God story in it? You know, what's that moment yeah. where God stepped in and, and, you know, changed everything for you. So it's really cool. We've got some big names on there so far. Well, I just watched an episode with uh, Taylor Dooley. <sighs> Love her. Lava Girl from Shark Boy and Lava Girl. How awesome was that to have her on? not only like my nephew, I have a seven-year-old nephew, Shane's son, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I said, let's watch this. And it's such a cute movie, but I remember Shark Boy and Lava Girl yeah. back in the day. And here she is. And so not only is she, you know, in this hit movie right now, uh, and I mean, it is just crushing yeah, all the, the records on Netflix, right? Oh, yeah. Everyone is watching this because it's, it's a positive uplifting movie that yeah. the whole family can see. So she is one of the most incredible human beings you will ever meet. And her faith is so strong. I just, I, I adore her. So I'm so happy for her. And, uh, and she announced this when we were talking, uh, they're going to come up with a sequel to We Could Be Heroes. So she's just going to keep working and God is blessing her above and beyond. Good for her. Yeah. So have you, have you, you know, you're with this show, with your focus on faith, are you finding that people are seeking you out now that some of the people that may not have talked about it as much are starting to come out and say, Hey, here's a little story about my faith. Yes. 
Uh, first of all, our emails are flooded right now for his story. Everybody keeps saying, you know, check this person out, check that. Hey, I saw this. I want to be on your show. So the floodgates have opened. Uh, but me personally, I'll get emails and I'll get messages on my social media of people just saying, you know, thank you for sharing that, or I love this, or that really inspired me. Um, so we're getting a lot of positive feedback. And it's so fulfilling to know that God is using me to get his message out, to spread yep. the word, to, you know, shine some light in the world. And it's such an honor. And I'm so humbled to be able to do something that I love, but also to be doing the work of the Lord. So that's, it's, you can't, <laughs> you can't get any better than that. Well, I'll, I'll just go to say third time's a charm. You had your two runs in Hollywood. Yeah. Now you're, you're designing, you know, your platform yep. uh, to honor him. And Absolutely. What, what a time for it. I mean, here we are, in a, a pandemic that's lasted a lot longer than any of us thought. Oh. Um, we've had an election year unlike anything we could have imagined, civil unrest. Yeah. We're about to transition out of all that. And to me, I feel transitions are the toughest part for people. We just struggle with transitions. Um, you know, I, I learned that when Gina had cancer, right? there's all the treatments. Yeah. And then afterwards you transition back and there's not really the rule book for it. And I feel that everything that you're doing right now is going to become such a valuable guide for people as we transition to this new era of life. Yeah, they they really people are looking for light. They're looking for that hope and the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. And you know, shows like yours and shows like mine. This we are putting something out there for people who are searching because right yeah. now there's a lot of darkness in the world and negativity and things that are just so evil and bad. But you have to look past that and you have to look for the light. You have to look for the people that are doing projects like you and I are doing and they're yeah. out there and we're creating more and more. And I feel like that's building up so much. And we're creating this new Hollywood. We're creating new platforms because right. there needs to be other options. For, and there's millions and millions of people that are sitting back, not liking what's happening in the world today and just longing for something like what we're doing and what we can you know provide for them and that is all through god i mean and he's going to make a way for all of us that's right and and this couldn't come at a better time people need it now more than ever and you know you've touched down on the l word a few times today i'm gonna i'm gonna lead into <laughs> something here but as a as a business coach i work with a lot of leaders and i and i always tell leaders that just like you said there's a lot of darkness out there if they turn on the tv it's negative uh, the news is negative Social media, a lot of it can be negative. Maybe even friends and family can be negative. And mm -hmm. I've often said for a very long time to people that you may be the sole source of positivity in somebody's life. And, so and I use the analogy, if you were a ship at, at lost at sea at night, you would want to see that beacon of the, uh, the, the lighthouse. Yes. And I've said that for years. And I know one of your favorite sayings is be a light. Be a light. I, and, and you've, that's probably been your mantra for a long time, but how important is it right now for us all to be a light? Very important. Um, you know, and me personally, it's like, that's what I feel like God is calling me to do. And I just, I hear that over and over again in my mind, in my heart. It's like, just be a light. Don't mm -hmm. change anything. Just be a light for others to see. And it's exactly what you're saying. It is very important right now for all of us. If you are a light, if you are a light source, shine brighter than ever right now, because right. all of the darkness around, people are going to be looking for the light and they're going to come that way to the light. And that's where we will provide, you know, what they need, help for them, positivity, um, you know, love and compassion and faith and whatever else they need, because people are just, they're lost out there. So we are that spotlight. We are, you know, it, it's we're the we're the lighthouse, we're the light tower, and that light comes directly from above. So we're just beacons. Exactly, and I think that you know you said something so profound there. We've got to shine brighter now. Mm -hmm. This is our opportunity, and yeah. and it's always good to have our light on. Yeah. But most people have it on during the good times. <laughs> they keep that light on, and well, every all the stars align right now. Things are going well. But the pandemic has really caused us to make a decision. Are we going to turn our light on or turn it off? Yeah. And, and I love that you've turned the light on. And in the darkness, more people will see it. Correct. And, you know, and because I think, you look around and you see all these people that are suffering right now, right. whether it's mental illness from the pandemic, depression, suicide. I mean, all of these numbers are going up and, you know, domestic abuse. I just, my heart just breaks 
for everything that's happening in the world right now. And it's like, what can I do? What can I do? And this is all I can do, which is, yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to sugarcoat. It's like, that's a lot that you can do. That's is right. To just be there for somebody, you know, to uplift everyone, to, you know, help them stay positive and easier said than done. Because when you're, you know, in bad situations, that's right. Um, you know, what do you do? But I just want to encourage everybody, you know, if you're going through a hard time right now, there is hope and there is light and God will step in. If you, you know, cry out to him and ask him for help and he will provide a way every time. That's right. So I just, you know, right now shine bright, shine we brighter than ever. Bright. You know, I even think parents need this right now because so many of them have had their children separated from their oh. friends, separated from their teachers, separated from classmates. Yeah. Uh, this pandemic has affected everybody differently, but we're all yeah. impacted by it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I turned my TV off. I used to watch it and I got so consumed with it and it was just sure. nothing but negativity. The minute I started turning off the news and just focusing on life and happiness and positivity. And, you know, do I like what's going on in certain situations sometimes? No. Are things difficult? Yes. Yeah. But some way, somehow, I have always found a way to look at it in a positive way and look at what good can come of this. And That's it's right. all in your mind. I mean, you really have to have that mindset of this is challenging right now, but there's a reason for it. And a lot of times you won't see it until later, but you're like, oh, I understand why that happened. Uh, but it is all, you know, how how we take it in and, and the thought process and uh, our attitude uh, about everything um, and tuning out all of the negativity, turn off your TV, right. go outside, get some fresh air, laugh with somebody, um, you know, enjoy life because it's not gloom and doom. That's what we hear it is. Yes. But honestly, a lot of people I talk to are very happy and doing very well. So I, I think- And optimistic about the future. Very optimistic. You know, and that's you what we need to be. We do. We absolutely do. I, I feel that while the pandemic has affected us physically, you know, we've been socially distanced, we've been stuck in our homes or six feet apart or wearing a mask or whatever. Yeah. I think the toll on our mindsets, because you, you just touched down on mindset, our mindsets have been impacted. Yeah. Um, can you just kind of give us some ideas on how do you keep your mindset so sharp, so focused, so positive? Yep. In, in a world of darkness right now, because I know a lot of people are struggling to tap into the power of their mindset. Maybe they feel that that's been lost too. Yeah. What has gotten me through is uh, every night before I go to bed, I have a little devotional book that I read out of, or um, there's a Bible app. It's, it's, uh, it's called YouVersion. So they have okay. Bible apps, lesson plans. I have to consume positivity uh, every single day, or I can't make it through. So for me, I'm a night person. Some people could do this in the morning, but I, I, I choose at night because it's like I wind down. Everything's quiet at night. I'm busy all the time. So I'll just, you know, keep I keep it on my nightstand and I'll read devotions uh, or I'll read, you know, something from the Bible app. And I just have to get my mind centered yeah. and focused on something positive, focused on, you know, good, the word. Uh, I'll also do that in the morning, too. So a lot of times also, I don't know if people uh, meditate or if anyone knows about meditation, but you can do these on YouTube. They have guided meditations that I highly recommend. Um, and that is very helpful to just kind of in breathing exercises, sure. taking a deep breath yeah. and doing simple things like that to just quiet your mind. And you don't have to do this for long periods of time either. It's like just for two minutes, you know, just try this breathing exercises, meditation. They also on, in all this stuff you could find on YouTube, um, they have these, uh, frequency it, it's music that you can listen to and they're like Delta waves and things like that. And it really does mm. like the music calms your soul yeah. and your mind. So there's all kinds of different resources that we have on YouTube to just make us calm and centered and focused. Uh, and again, turning off the TV, don't watch any bad movies. Don't watch anything with, you know, killing or negativity. I mean, you have to take that out because yeah. what you consume in your mind and, and through your eyes, I mean, that, that becomes part of who you are. So watch uplifting shows, um, turn off anything that's negative, surround yourself with other positive, happy people. Um, if you're going through a really hard time, you, you need someone that's going to pull you out of that. And whether that's watching a show like yours um, or, you know, watching video, just something that's going to yeah. uplift your spirits. You have to constantly 
surround yourself with positivity. And sometimes it might take a while to, you know, get into that because a lot of people right. aren't happy. They don't have That's positivity right. or they're in a negative situation, but find that one thing that's going to be that escape for you. Is it music? Is it walking outside? Is it doing, you know, athletics, something that's going to bring joy into your life? You have to have that every day. Um, and I pray, obviously prayer yeah. for me is big. And um, whether it's five minutes a day or five hours a day, uh, you know, I have a very busy schedule. So I'm really trying harder to make more time for God um because that's another thing too where it's like to keep him in the center uh he he will always that's help right. you and get you a way out of whatever it is you're going through and so, that can easily be one of our biggest challenges is prioritizing our relationship with the lord yeah you know yeah. so many other things can can move us off of that right yeah i, I mean i, I don't think... care if it's a little prayer where you just like lord help me with this today that's yeah. it sometimes that's all you need and he and he hears you you know, whenever I have a guest on, I'm always listening to what they say and, and thinking of what would be a title for this show. <laughs> and I just heard consuming positivity. I mean, Ooh. I've never heard it that way before, but Lisa, that's brilliant. I think that we need to consume it because I've often said to people, you know, they'll, they'll say to me in the workplace or, or in the home front or wherever, but they'll say negativity travels so fast. Mm -hmm. And I said, it does. Negativity, if somebody does something bad, the world hears about it in 3.2 seconds. Yeah. If I do something good, people may never hear about it. <laughs> I mean, it's just yeah. it's just the reality of it, right? Maybe it'll end up in a newsletter next month. <laughs> um, but what I've always said is negativity does travel faster than positivity, but positivity is ultimately stronger. It will beat out negativity, but I've never really thought of it as consuming it, right? I've I, I focus on positivity. I'll exhibit positivity. I'll be a light, but we need to be more aware of consuming positivity. You know, I love that. That's a great title. I might have to write a book called consuming positivity. I'll give you credit for the title. <laughs> okay. I, I'll be in it. I'll, I'll, I'll be a contributor to the book, but yes, that, you can write the foreword. <laughs> great. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to. Yeah. That, how great is that? We should constantly focus on a diet of positivity. Yeah. No. Well, and it's so true. And, and as you say, like, just here's your whole body. It's your physical body, your mind, your soul, everything. And you literally are filling it up with happiness, joy, positivity, right. light, and then it exudes from you. And it's contagious because That's I right. know like everybody in my family, my friends, they very rarely have ever seen me upset. If I ever do get upset, what I'm one of those people where it's like, I close my door. I lock myself in my house. I don't come out and I just deal with it and I get through it and I rely on God and I find out what is he trying to teach me through this? I don't like this. I'm hurt. I'm in pain, you know, but, but what's the lesson here? And then he, miraculously, it's like, I come out 10 times better through this tragedy or whatever it is. Um, but most of the time, you know, that's, that's my time to, that's right. you know, kind of deal with whatever it is, but I know that people need positivity and light so that's where it's like i i refresh i recharge and then i go out into the world it's like who needs joy who needs love who needs light here i am and people just take and take and take and take and i love it and then i go home and i regroup and i fill back up again and, and there's no shortage of it it's an endless supply yes that's but if more part. people started doing this and spreading love and joy and positivity it's so much easier to be positive than it is to be negative it is. Um, it takes more energy to constantly be negative. It is. Yeah. And just smiling. It's like you feel good when you smile and to laugh. It, I recently had a birthday and I never laughed so hard. In Happy my birthday, life. by the way. Thank you very much. It, it was wonderful. And I, it was a very small little gathering. We had a, a little dinner and I had some friends, um, Kent and Becky, who I have to give them a shout out because I'll make okay. them watch this. Uh, they, Kent got me this a uh, card and inside you open it up and it has those little voices that tell jokes and we're just laughing and laughing and I have yeah. never been filled with more joy in my life on that night because it was people that I loved it if you would have been in an airplane you probably would have seen this just light shining so bright coming from the top of the restaurant and people were wondering what is that it's like um what's that one movie monsters inc with the little kids laughter yeah 
It's like, I see like beacons of light just shining everywhere for everyone to see. And it's like this, it's easy. That's all you have to do is right. tap into that and be that and just disregard, stay away from the negativity, go to the light. Did you ever have a, a favorite verse through all the challenges? Did you have anything that you've ever gone back to and maybe shared with people more than any other verse? Cause it's not like there's bad verses, right? But yeah, did you I, have a favorite one during tough times? I think, you know, th there have been quite a few, um, but trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding and all your ways, acknowledge him and he will show you the path and show you the way. Yeah, um, It's like at all times, just trust him. And that's hard to do, uh, you know, but there's, there's so many different um, yeah. verses. I mean, I have verses for strength. I love the iron sharpens iron. I love yes. Ephesians putting on the whole armor of God. That one was one of my favorite, I think, because it equipped me every day to go out into the world and do not go out into the world until you have on your full armor of God. Yeah. And, you know, you guys can look that up Ephesians armor of God, and it shows you each piece of armor that you put on. Um, and that helped me with anything that I was going through. So you know, it was interesting. I, I'm not the best at quoting scripture. That's not my strength. <laughs> where, you know, some people there's, they know, they know like every verse. I'm like, wow, they're good. Yeah. Um, so there's two things. I am going to take a lot of our content. We've been asked by people. So I do leadership or sales training or goal setting, uh, all kinds of different corporate trainings and development programs. More and more people lately have come up and asked, do you have a version with scripture in it? And so that is something I may have to run some of those ideas by you and say, yeah. what do you think about this? Um, we're getting more of the business world wanting to hear a little bit more on this side over here. You know, they're saying, hey, could you get some scripture in there? So we're going to do that. Yeah. But, but the one that really stood out to me, I remember when Gina had cancer the first time I was trying to find a verse. And, you know, I also grew up Catholic and then became Christian later. So we have a lot of similarities. Yeah. Um, for me, it was, you know, Philippians 4, 4 through 4, 7. And, and in there, I remember reading, it said, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. And I thought, all right, it's not often that the Bible says the exact same thing in the exact same sentence. So something's going on here. And I, and I really took that to heart that rejoice in all things, the good things, that's easy to do, the bad things, a little tougher. And then right after that, it said, because people have asked me, well, how did you handle all that? Being a caregiver five times, seeing everything, keeping your cool. And then right there, it says, do not be anxious about anything. Um, but in everything, give your give your your prayers and your requests to God. Yeah. And I, I think that's hard for us to give things up, even the stuff that we should be. You know? And that's Very what people really need to do more of. Would you, would you agree with that, that we just need to give more to God? Absolutely. That's, I mean, 100% um, give it to God. And, and like we both said, it's hard to do. I'm, you know, type A personality. I have to do everything myself. I'm a producer. I can juggle everything. And I, I think right before, you know, we did this, I, those are the things that usually crumble first are the ones that I try to put my hands on or my label on. And the ones where I let go and let God or, or things will happen out of left field that I'm not even expecting. Yeah. And yeah, if you just give it up to God and let him take care of things, he does a much better job than we can and knows oh. much more than we do. <laughs> well, and it's interesting because we just make that decision that we'll all handle this one. Yeah. But I have a feeling there's people listening right now that, you know, they may be at a crossroads too. You know, here you were in Hollywood, you've got a very successful career launching you made some decisions. You prioritize things for your family. You right. prioritize things for the Lord. Um, what was the thought process when you start to let go of something? Because it's not easy for all of us. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to hold on to it, and especially with so many amazing titles that you have: producer, director, writer. Those are very in the trenches type of roles. So, yeah. for you to give it to God, was there some things that helped you to be able to do that? Well, it was a struggle. And, you know, from the outside looking in, I look, oh my gosh, she has this great life. She lived in Hollywood and look at, I'm great now, but wow, uh, I did not have a good life. And I went through lots of struggles and lots of heartache and lots of pain. And, oh, I made some of the worst mistakes of my life and, um, and learned the hard way many, many times. Uh, I, I do need to write a book because people wouldn't believe the life that I've had. A lot of people don't know my whole story but it's, it's something. Um, and I think 
when I started to just let go and let God, uh, it's a challenge and it's hard at first, but what happens is you have to try. And when you let God take over and you trust him with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and you're like, all right, God, I'm giving this to you. And he will take it every time and he will show you and, and he will make things right. Yeah. And like you could never imagine. And so that's all we have to do is just take that first step. And then once you see, oh my gosh, look what just happened. I gave that to God That's right. and everything turned out okay. 10 times better than I could ever imagine. You're like, let me try that again. And it's a muscle that you have to work. And I think the more that I trusted God and I gave things to God, there was a point in my life where I was just on autopilot and I didn't even care. It's like, I was like, whatever you want, Lord. Um, and it you went was, all in on that one. I did. And you it gave was, it all to him. It, I really did. <laughs> and I would laugh sometimes. I mean, it was, I, I would sit here and go, oh my gosh, again, it, look at what he did now. And it was this thing where I'm not going to say it became a game, but it's like, all right, let me try that again. There's, there's no way it could work again. And sure enough, when you just release everything to him, but you yeah. do have to trust completely and you have to know that no matter what, and sometimes the outcome isn't what you want. That's right. It's going to be something very different, but Absolutely. every time that would happen down the road, I would understand why God did certain things or why he would say no. You know, as, as a father, you're a father, yep. you're not going to tell your child yes to everything because there's a lot of things, you know, that are not good for them or down the road and you can't give them everything. So God does the same thing with us. You know, we could pray for whatever we want, but if it's not for our well-being and if it's not going to better us and better the right. kingdom, God's going to say, I'm sorry, I, I can't give you that. I'm going to give you something better, though. It's not going to seem like it's better, but you will understand one day. And that's what faith is. You yes. just have to take that giant leap of faith, put everything in God's hands, let him do the work. And then you will not want to be off of autopilot. That's right. And you'll just get like... And there's times where it's like, of course, I, I have to work and I have to do my job. And, you know, you do have to take control and you do have to do certain things. But if I ever take over too much, God will always put me in check just enough where he'll, he'll pull me back a little bit and yeah. be like, OK, that's enough. Now let me. <laughs> so, but you know what's kinda, great about that is yeah. we live in a world of stress right now. Everybody's stressed out. They're stressed over the pandemic. They're stressed over the restrictions. Yeah. They're stressed over being laid off. We're stressed. When we can release things to God, it reduces our stress and actually makes us healthier, anyways. I mean, we feel better. Yeah. But it's hard for us to let go of the fact that maybe we don't understand everything or maybe we don't understand His plan. Right. I think that's one of the biggest challenges. It's scary yeah. because, you know, sometimes what we want is not what is good for us. Yeah. Uh, and we have to let go of that control. And I'm like one of the biggest control freaks that there is. It's like, I just, you know, I'm full speed ahead and let me do this and that. Yeah. And um, that's a really hard thing to do, but you can do, if I could do it, anybody could do it. So <laughs> um, there you, you're also, giving us hope. Yeah, there is, there's lots of hope. Um, you know, and in this pandemic too, I honestly have, I, it's been a blessing to me. I think being inside and not being in the world where all the craziness is, and you're kind of in your little safety bubble, sure. so to speak, uh, and it's what you make of it. So if you're at home, I mean, my gosh, spending more time with your family or spending more time with God or taking up a hobby or doing something that's uplifting. Yeah. This is what people um, should have been doing and, and can still do right now in this time. Um, but again, you know, you're not questioning it. You know, you're not questioning his plan. Right. You know, when you and I met 12 years ago, we would never have thought we'd be on a podcast, but if we left the house, we have to wear a mask. I mean, we wouldn't have imagined the world the way it is. Yeah. And here you are embracing what you can, you, you know, you're yeah. not angry with it. You're not negative. You're not questioning the Lord. And I think that that's part of that control that we have to give up. Yeah. I mean, I, I have looked at this as a giant blessing and I have found myself once again and grown even more just in this time, because I, I have taken this time to just say, all right, Lord, what do you want me to do now? And that's why all these shows are coming up. It's like, okay, I'm used to being on big movie sets or TV shows yeah. and, you know, some professional, you know, productions around me. Here I am in my house 
with a camera and a computer and we're on Zoom and you know what? I'm reaching more people now through that than I ever have. So that's a God thing. That's correct. And more people need to hear you. And that's, I'm committed to share your show, your message and what you're doing with everybody because you are so on point right now. And, and it's interesting. I don't know if Shane was ever asked this type of question, but Gina and I would get it often. You know, she's had you know, four different types of cancers, cardiac arrest. People have said, if you could go back in time, would you have done anything to avoid that? Or in other words, you know, would you take it away if you could not have that first cancer, which led to everything else? Yeah. And her answer has always been very profound. She said, no, I have to go through it again because we would have gotten married, had kids, but we got married she had cancer and it, it caused us to wait seven years and be told that she would never have children. I mean, we went six years after the cancer and nothing ever. And finally in 2006, uh, we are blessed with the news that she was pregnant. And so again, she defied the odds and we wouldn't have the daughter today if we had followed our own plan or been allowed to have that plan that we thought of. And I think about that every single day that this, this amazing 14 year old um, that I have such an amazing relationship with. She wouldn't be here if Gina and I specifically Gina didn't have to go through all of that. And so, you know, people really need to embrace the moment that they're in. There's some things that we can't change, nor would we want to, Yeah. you know, because exactly like you said, Lisa, right after that, there's some amazing blessings, some amazing opportunities you know, I mean, incredible. And yeah. I, again, I just, I, I'm so amazed at Gina, how strong she is. I mean, to fight through all that. I know what it's like, you know, I, I was my brother's caregiver yeah. too, along with the whole family and sure. what you went through. I know what you went through and I know what she went through and uh, Shane, very similar. Um, he wrote a blog while he was going through everything. And one of the weeks that he was writing, he titled it, uh, I am thankful for cancer. Yeah. And he would not trade it for the world either because it changed him as a person. And yep. he said it brought him closer to God. And he ended up writing devotionals later about it. Oh. So he, he, same thing, him and Gina. But again, amazing. you know, you have to embrace that, that you have to embrace your own experiences. Yeah. And, and I've often said, you can, you can succumb to the circumstance or you can embrace the opportunity right beyond it but we have to get through it first. Now, I, I know, Lisa, you a, a trait for you is gratefulness, a very yes. important trait. Um, can you just touch down on that a little bit? At a time when people feel like so much has been taken from them, here you are saying we need to be more grateful. Can you just share a little bit with us? Yes. Gratitude for me is everything. Um, no matter what is happening in your life, if you think about it, there's somebody suffering or going through something 10 times worse than you are. Like yeah. you were saying, you're not going to even complain about when you feel sick because look what Gina went through. That's right. And to just take every single moment um, and just be in the moment and look around you. I mean, the fact that we have so much, we yeah. are, are so blessed above and beyond being grateful is everything to me because it's about being content where you are. And that's, that's true right. happiness. If you're grateful for everything that you have and you're grateful for the moment and you're grateful for the lessons and you're grateful for the food on your table every day that you're here breathing, you're living another day of life. Um, you know, if, if you have clothes on your back, a lot of people don't. If you have a roof over your that's head, right. if you have a car, if you have a job right now, uh, if you have family, if you have people that you love, be grateful for all of that. Because it's it, people just take everything for granted. And if you stop and think, wow, look at everything I have that I'm so blessed with. And look at this person over here. Or look at people in that country that have nothing. Right. Um, just gratitude is everything. And yet the opposite of that, right, is when we start looking at people and saying what we don't have. Yeah. And that can consume us too. Very easy to do right now. I mean, it's always been easy to do, but even easier you are a big believer in giving back as well, giving back to the community as well. Yeah. And, and can you just tell us a little bit about, from, a, from a standpoint on achieving a greater life, mm -hmm. achieving greatness in your life, 
how important is it to give back to our communities? You have to give back. If you are fortunate enough to, you know, be healthy, uh, to have some finances uh, and to have a little bit of free time, that's, I, I think we're all obligated to give back to those in need. That has always been a huge part of my life. Uh, any community that I've ever lived in, I love doing volunteer work. Honestly, if I'm having a bad day, the first thing I think about is, all right, where could I give back? What can I do? In the minute you go give and you go volunteer or you do something for someone else, I guarantee you 10 times out of 10, you are going to be the one that's blessed and you're going to get the reward from it. Not because you're doing something and not because you're expecting something in return, but to give of yourself, to give of your time, to give of your finances. Yeah. It's such a blessing when you see that you're helping impact other people's lives or you're making a difference in someone's life. Um, you know, here locally, I really do a lot of work with uh, an organization called Heroes Camp. Um, if you go to heroescamp.com, it's they basically it's fathering the fatherless. It's these kids mm. that are in these horrible situations. They come to this basketball camp and uh, there's a husband and wife that run it, um, Pat and BJ Magley, and they love these kids. They play basketball. They do Bible studies. They give them home cooked meals and they give them, you know, shoes and clothing and everything that they need. So I started doing video production for them and fell in love with it. Now I volunteer and I, I just I can't do enough for them. You're consuming um, more positivity. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, we, I love it. You know, I first learned about giving back in the Marine Corps and they they have their you know annual event for Toys for Tots. And when I was a young Marine and I first started, I didn't want to do it. You know, I didn't want to go do toys. Here I am fresh out of boot camp. I'm a hardcore warrior. Why am I going to go do toys? Yeah. Now, you're not asked in the Marine Corps if you want to do it. They, you're voluntold. So I was voluntold. <laughs> it's an official word. Voluntold like to go work it and handing out toys to children who had nothing, even at 18 years old, was um, was just life changing. Oh, to see the smiles on their faces, and that's probably yeah. the only toy they even got for Christmas or. Yeah, some some families had no money or some kids had no families. Mm -hmm. And uh, and now, you know, we actually started our own, Gina and I started our own foundation a few years ago called the Think Great Foundation. And we do one thing, we award scholarships to military spouses as a way of saying thank you for your commitment, thank you for your sacrifice, everything they give up. And in 2019, that was our first year, we handed out 25,500 in scholarships. And it was the most amazing thing to do something for this, this community, the mill spouse community right. that most people never think of on a daily basis. And we've just wow. received so much feedback. So, you know, it's, it's another way of consuming positivity. I feel you, you, mm -hmm. you can't come out of doing something good for somebody and feel bad. Yeah, you it, exactly you know? try it. If you don't believe us, try it. Go That's do right. something for someone else. I challenge, it's, I challenge everyone listening, go do something. It's the give back someone. challenge. There we go. We just created exactly. our own challenge. Yeah. Look at us. We're writing books. We're doing challenges, creating and, challenges. <laughs> and you already have a title for your next book and I get to yeah. write the foreword. I mean, this is a, this has been a great show. This is um, a great show. This is the best interview I've ever done. So Hey, that's what I wanted to hear. How yeah. great is that? That's going on the yeah. sizzle reel. Um, <laughs> I'll say it again. <laughs> Your show is the best show I have ever been on. Everybody should watch it every day. I love that. That is definitely going to go viral. Well, there you go. let me ask you this. We wrap everything up today. Yeah. You have given us so many amazing nuggets, so many great things to think about. What do you have up ahead for you? I know you're working on his story. Is there any other goals you're working on? Yeah. So, I mean, his story is really big for me right now. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, tune in. Uh, you could even, like I said, go to hisglory.me. And the name of the show is His Story. There's lots of different programs on there. So look for His Story. Yeah. Um, they stream it live on their website, on the app. So get the app to His Story. Uh, and you can watch them on all of those platforms. They also stream on uh, Facebook, but then they also put them up on YouTube and Vimeo wow. so you could watch it later. So, I mean, you can't miss it. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, but what's really cool about it is they have given me my own clothing line that I just helped design. So now I'm a fashion designer too, on top of everything. Jeez. And in about two weeks, we're launching it. And there's some really cool stuff on there. I helped design it because I'm like, listen, I, I want to be able to wear these shirts and hats every day. So I made them really cool uh, well, for guys, I, for girls. They've got oh, good. Some, I was going to ask you if you included yes, the guys, you, I will send you and Gina some uh, t-shirts and hats. 
And um, yeah, it's, so I'm very excited. So keep an eye uh, on either the app. You can go there and find the line there uh, or on his glory.me. And what is that? Uh, what is the clothing line called then? So it's called his story. Okay. Awesome. And yep. So all the different shows have different clothing lines. So it's just t-shirts and hats and, you know, I'll come out with other little tumblers and things like that. But it's very exciting because this is the first time I've ever done anything like that. So I'll let you know once we launch, I'm going to blast it everywhere, put it on websites and uh, you guys can check out the well, clothing and, and it all goes back into the ministry. And it is a 501c3, by the way. So you're great. actually getting a tax deduction for it. That's great. I will have to keep an eye on the clothes that you send directly to me because both my wife and my daughter like to wear my shirts. So they disappear. So well, I'll tell you, there's they're going to like theirs so much that... Okay, um, they won't need to say, and there is one, actually, I have the verse, the iron sharpens iron and it's like a workout shirt. So they're little tank tops. Oh, so I like the that. guys have like the muscle shirts and the girls. Have, so I can send you those and then you guys will have the girls and the guys version, but it's the same thing on each one of them. So you, you can't steal it from each other. <laughs> okay. I will let them know. You said they can't steal my shirts. No, they can't. They will have their own. So awesome. Hands off girls. It's yeah. <laughs> I'll I know, send you right? I'm, I'm taking that little audio clip and I'm going to play that every day here hands off <laughs> Lisa, you heard it here <laughs> if, if if you had some tips for somebody listening right now that is maybe ready to start on a new pathway um, head in a, in a new direction in their life get themselves unstuck and and start striving for greatness do you have any any tips you can share with them any I last do. thoughts i do um do what you love and the rest will follow mm. That is the most important thing. Um, I am working on a documentary film right now, uh, lots of different productions. And I sat there with uh, some of the people that I'm doing the film with. And I said, you know, I need to make millions and millions of dollars. How am I going to do that? We were kind of joking around. And they said, and these are all very well-to-do, you know, business owners who sure. have, I, they've made a ton of money. And so I was picking their brain on, you know, entrepreneurship and, you know, what, what advice did they have? And that's what they said. And it really hit home. Because they each said, the companies that we had, we loved what we did. We didn't think, yep. hey, I'm going to go out and I'm going to make a million dollars today. How do I do that? They said, I'm going to do something I love. And the rest of it fell into place. Yeah. And that's anyone that's successful. If they're passionate, if you are passionate about something, um, go after that. And don't ever give up. Find a way to make it happen. And the rest just falls into place. That is so awesome. And, and what a powerful message for right now in the world we live in. Yeah. Lisa, I know that you are impacting people. I know people listening right now probably want to reach out and, and, and find out how to connect with you or follow you. Um, how can we connect with you? How can we follow you? Yes. So I'm on all social media platforms. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. On Twitter, I'm at the Lisa Varga. On Instagram, I'm at the Lisa Varga. And on Facebook, Lisa Varga. And you can go to my website, lisavarga.com. Uh, but you can also find my shows and other things uh, on His Glory. So hisglory.me or the His Glory app. And I think that's it. You can find me on all of those. So follow me. And uh, then we can connect on social media. And you guys can check out everything that I'm doing. Send me messages. And, and I'll send you some back. And, yeah. and I'll uplift you and, and share my light and shine bright for everyone to see. <laughs> we, we need more light right now. And Lisa, you shared so many great things. There is no doubt you have put God at the center of your life. You have unloaded on him so he can help you. And you are doing exactly what you love. And you've shined your uh, light on us today. So thank you. I can't, well, uh, can't thank you enough for being a blessing on our show today. Thank you for having this platform and having me on as your guest, because without this, you know, people wouldn't know what I have right. to say. So thank you for sharing my message um, means a lot to me. And this really was the best interview I've, I've ever done. So thank you. <laughs> you are very welcome. And you are a gift to all of us. Thank you again. Thank you. 